Today's Namaste Yoga continues the Nourishing Your Energy series, and today we will connect with your energy. Hello and welcome to episode 266 of Namaste Yoga. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Dr. Melissa West and today we are going to connect with your energy. So for today's show you may need a block, a chair or a meditation cushion or a folded blanket. I've got my blanket laid out today because yesterday we were out filming in the mud And so my mat, you, I don't know if you've ever practiced outside and put your yoga mat down on the wet ground, you may have noticed that your mat is like a sponge. And so my mat's really wet. And so I, that I don't get wet bum today. Uh, We've got, we've got, uh, I've got my blanket laid out to keep myself dry. And we have three new beings, living beings on our set today. (laughs) <laughs> we keep inviting people onto our show and we have new living beings, so <laughs> people are going to come, we know. Uh, <laughs> it's imminent. <laughs> um, we have uh, some new plants that Tim and Trinity gave me for my birthday this past week. So they're very beautiful and I'm very grateful for their presence in our home because they give us lots of fresh air and they purify our air and they make our set for Namaste Yoga beautiful because it's just not quite warm enough to be outside yet. Almost. The cherry blossoms are out and it's spring here, but it was just very wet and Tim and I both had quite the chill yesterday from being outside filming. <laughs> so thank you to Squeezed and Dusky Leaf for um, helping to make this show possible through the, uh, the props and the clothes. So uh, today I'm wearing this limited edition Donna calls these burgundy, but honestly, they're fire engine red (laughs) leggings. So if you like red, they're limited edition. You'll want to order these soon uh, with the Om Mani Padme Om leggings on them. They're fun. We did a fun photo session with them uh, last week. My prop with these ones was the ice cream from Beacon Hill Drive-Thru. That was really fun. And I'm wearing the Dancing Ganesh um, bamboo top. Um, and it's, it's really soft, really nice. And I was, already told you the props that you're going to need, so we've got the blocks today. And uh, you may want to bolster for the end of class. Today's testimonial comes to us from the membership site from Janice. And actually, that reminds me, um, she did the connective tissue class. This is about the connective tissue class on the membership site for your feet. And members, if you want to practice something before this class to prepare your body for this class, I would recommend the connective tissue class for your hands because this class, uh, we're going to be doing a lot for your neck. And so when you do that connective tissue class for your hand, your fascia is all connected, so it really helps to release your neck in preparation. So she says, I am so grateful for this class. I am having a lot of side effects from a breast cancer drug I have to take for five years. And anybody who is on that drug, and I know uh, some of my friends that are on that drug, it's not very pleasant. I am two years and three months into the five years, and I I do know, (laughs) you do know exactly where you are on that drug. For several months, when I get up in the morning, it is almost as though my left ankle is fused in a flexed position. So it's stuck here. Um, When I step down, it is very painful and the foot will not go flat, allowing me to stand on the outer edge of my foot. My inner edge does not reach the floor. Now, before I even get up, I make circles with my 
foot, then I point my feet straight out and back toward me. This warms up my ankle joint. I keep a squash ball on the table next to my bed in a pretty little red votive candle holder. I like that she makes that special for herself. I get out of bed and I immediately do this connective tissue exercise. What a difference. I do both feet trying to prevent the other foot from getting like my left one. After doing this, my whole foot touches the floor, but still a little stiff. I have this wooden foot massager that has three bumpy wood bars that roll and I follow up with rolling my foot over that. Um, my foot then moves freely pain-free. The wood roller thing alone doesn't help and the, and the reason for that is that the wood rollers can actually damage your fascia so it's really much better to stick to the, the squash ball because it won't uh, actually damage your fascia. It is the connective tissue exercises that do the trick and then allow the other roller thing to give the final release. So um, I cannot thank you enough for this teaching me these exercises. Before this, I was literally hobbling along in terrible pain with my foot twisted to the outside edge. Namaste, Jani. So thanks so much for leaving your comments and letting me know about your experiences and how your yoga practice is affecting you in your life. It's always great to hear about your personal experiences. Okay, so let's begin with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. And we're going to start in by connecting with our energy by breathing into your belly and you can even take your hands and place them on your lower belly and just start by breathing into your belly, connecting with your energy. Feeling breath movement under your hands here. And then we're going to begin moving your head, so breathe in in the center. And breathe out, connect your movement with your breath, roll your head to the left. Breathe in, roll your head back to the center. Breathe in, connect your movement to your breath. Roll your head to the right. Not trying to force or manipulate anything. Breathe in center. Breathe out, roll. Stopping the movement at the end of your breath, coordinating your breath and your movement. Breathe out, roll your head to the right. Coordinate your movement so that it ends at the end of your breath. Breathe in, coordinate your movement so that it, your head comes back to the center on the end of your inhalation. Mm -hmm. 
Breathe out, roll to the left. Breathe in center. Breathe out, roll your head to the right. Breathe in, bring your head back to the center. And let's do one more each side. Breathe out to the left. Breathe in center. Breathe out to the right. And breathe in center. And then take your arms up, hold on to your elbows. And as you breathe out and lower your head to the left, you're going to lower your elbows to the right. So breathe in. Breathe out. Your elbows go to the right. Your head lowers to the left. Breathe in center. Breathe out. Your head rolls to the right. Your elbows lower to the left. Breathe in center. So coordinating breath and movement. So the last one each side. Moving really slowly, breathing with the rhythm of your breath and then when everything comes back into the center you're going to move your knees with your head so your elbows go in the opposite direction of your knees and your head so inhale exhale elbows go to your right your knees and your head go to your left
So your elbows will probably go a lot further than mine to the right because um, because of my right my left shoulder at this time. And then breathe into the center. And then breathe out your head and your knees go to the right and your elbows go to the left. Moving slowly, connecting with your breath. And one more each side, really connecting your breath pace to your movement pace. So slowing down your movement to go with the length of your breath in and your breath out. And then come on back center. Lower your arms back down to your belly. Take a breath in. And a breath out. And notice if you feel more connected to your energy now. And then you're going to roll to your side and come up onto all fours. Okay, from here, we're going to do cat pose. So come onto all fours, with your hands under your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. And if your wrists bother you in this pose, you can always roll up your yoga mat and place the the heels of your hands there so you've got a little lift through your wrists and then you're going to exhale and round up through your back and inhale and arch through your back and today i want you to really pay attention to the space between your shoulder blades 
So as you round up through your back, feel that space between your shoulder blades open and widen and broaden. And as you drop down, feel it sink down towards the ground. So connect to that space between your shoulder blades and your back as you breathe out and round. And as you breathe in an arch. Okay, and then from here, I'm going to do pigeon pose just to open up your hips a little bit. So slide your right knee forward to your right wrist, reach your left leg back and long, and then fold forward over your bent right leg. And if this causes any issues in your knees, bothers you in any way, you can always take Figure four, eye of the needle pose on your back. Where you lie on your back, bend your knees, cross your right ankle over the top of your left thigh, draw your left knee into your chest, reach your right hand through the space between your right leg and your left leg, hold on behind your left thigh and draw your right leg, draw both legs towards your torso. This is just as good posture. So whatever works best for you today in your body. And here you're going to connect with your breath. And then you can release this posture from this side of your body. And you can either take eye of the needle or figure four on your back, or you can come into pigeon ik pad rajkopatasan on the other side. So you slide your left knee forward to your left wrist, bring your left heel over to your left hip, reach your right leg long behind you, lift up nice and tall through your spine, and then fold forward over your bent left leg. So whichever version works best for you, the intention is to stretch out your left hip. So you'll feel it in the outside of your left leg and into your left buttocks. And then connect with your breath. And then release this pose from your body and find a comfortable way to sit for your mudra. We're going to do the makar mudra. It's the mudra for nourishing your energy. So the way that that works is you bring your thumb and your fourth finger together. You extend your other fingers 
on your left hand. You bring your right hand so that the palm of your right hand rests on the back of your left hand. You take the web between your index finger and your thumb and you place it between your ring finger and your baby finger on your left hand and you rest it at the level of your navel. Okay, so close your eyes. Sink down through your sit bones, lengthen up through your spine, let your head be back over your rib cage. Take a deep breath in. Let it fall out of your mouth and connect with your breath in your belly. And imagine that in your belly there's a lake and each time you breathe in, you can breathe in a waterfall into your lake. And each time you breathe out, that lake gets wider and deeper, nourishing your energy. And as you stay with that very intentional breath to nourish your energy, I will share with you the teachings for today on connecting with your energy. When we reestablish our connection with the life energy inside of ourselves, our scattered, exhausted self comes to wholeness again. Instead of allowing ourselves to be overwhelmed or in entertained by outside stimuli, I think you could say, I was going to say entrained, and you could say that as well, we have the choice to turn inward and connect with our life energy. When we are distracted by outside information and experts that tell us what to do and information that overloads us, we forget that within us is a miracle. Within us, we have the true life force energy of our divine self. It is a true gift to become aware of our energy as, a, as we increase our connection to our energy and this important internal guidance and support system. When we practice yoga, we have the opportunity to return to and connect to our true self. This is not seeking anything new or trying to gain anything outside of ourselves. It is simply a matter of reducing outside distractions to connect with what already exists inside of us. By connecting with our energy, we fuse all the parts of ourselves together again. This fusion rebuilds and repairs all of our internal communication mechanisms. In yoga, we call them nadis. So the energy channels, we call them nadis. They carry the messages between your energy, your body, mind, emotions, and spirit. When you are connected with your energy, you make better choices and you recover more quickly from illness and you generally have more energy. In order to connect with our life force energy, we must respect the subtlety and gentle, gentle nature of energy. As a result, we must be quiet and attentive and that's why the movements that we've done so far in this class have been so slow and gentle so that we can be so attentive and respect the subtle and gentle nature of the energy if we want to connect with our life force energy we can't charge in with force and control it is a gentle and gradual process so that's why we've been really doing these gentle and gradual movements so that we can come in and connect in a gentle and gradual way connecting with your energy is a process of building a relationship and we've been doing that process already of building that relationship by connecting with our breath and moving slowly today so today we will begin and we have begun that process of creating a connection with your energy and building a relationship. And we're doing that through breath and movement. So reflect on these teachings and how they relate to you and your life. And begin to form an intention of what it is you would like to receive in your life, what it is you are trying to create, sustain, 
release or rebirth in your life. And once you've formed your intention for why it is that you're here today, then you can begin to wiggle and stretch out. And you can make your way up to standing. Okay, so from standing, we're going to um, do some movement with breath for your neck. And I chose to focus a lot on our neck today because to me, your neck is, well, in the chakras is the chimney between your heart chakra and your third eye. And then just physically, it's the connection between your head and your the rest of your body. So it connects a lot energetically and physically. So, um, and also it's a little bit more of a subtle area and yet it holds this 10 to 12 pound bowling ball on top of your body all day. So it has a big job as well. So um, it may seem like a subtle movement and yet this, um, these movements are probably some of the most important in all of our yoga repertoire that we can do <laughs> as well. So um, we're going to do four movements of your neck and we're gonna do it slowly with breath. So we'll start with ear to shoulder. It doesn't matter what side you go first. You're gonna inhale. Exhale, slowly lower your right ear to your right shoulder. Inhale, back to the center. And exhale, slowly lower your left ear to your left shoulder. Inhale, back center. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, back center. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, back center. So connect with the physical sensations, connect with your breath and the movement. And this might be unpleasant. And then let's do chin to chest. So breathe out, lower down. And breathe in, bring your chin back up parallel to the ground. Make sure you're soft in your knees so energy can flow through your body freely. And 
Okay, now you're going to breathe in in the center and breathe out, turn your head to the left. Breathe in center. Breathe out, turn your head to the right. Breathe out as you rotate away from the center. Breathe in center. And one more each side. And then we'll combine all those movements. So chin, drop your chin down to your chest, circle your head in front as you breathe out. And when you come to the center, breathe in and lift your head up. Breathe out, circle your head down to the center. When you come to the center, breathe in and lift up. Breathe out, circle down. Breathe in, circle up. Connecting your breath to your movement, coordinating the two. Breathe out down to the center. Breathe in back up. And come back to the center, take your hands to your belly, breathe in, breathe out, connect to your energy. And then from here, we're going to um, do a little bit of chair pose. So we're going to come down and back up in chair pose. So um, just inhale here. And then you're going to exhale and sit down. And then you're going to inhale back up. You'll circle your arms down in front and around. Inhale down. Exhale back up. And then take your hands to prayer position at your heart. Inhale here. Exhale, squat down. Take your elbows to the outside of your right knee. Inhale, back up to the center. Exhale, squat down. Elbows to the outside of your left knee. 
Inhale back up to the center. So squat to either side as you breathe out, connecting your movement with your breath. And then exhale, bring your hands down to your belly. Breathe in. And breathe out. And sense your connection to your energy. And then lower your hands down. And from here, you're going to take your feet wide on your mat. And you're going to inhale here. Exhale, you're going to roll your pelvis over your leg bones and roll forward so that the back of your neck is long. And then the movement here is going to be really subtle. You're just going to nod your head yes and no. So inhale on your yeses. Exhale on the noes. Just get a sense of your head releasing and floating here on the top of vertebrae of your neck. Very subtle movement. One more each way. And then you're slowly going to come up to standing. And from here, you're going to feel your feet on the ground in case that you have low blood pressure and that was fast for you. <laughs> and you're going to come down onto the ground and lie on your belly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on your belly, and you're gonna take your hands underneath your shoulders. Just roll your pelvis from side to side so you connect the front of your pelvis to the ground. Feel your pubic bone on the ground. Feel your low back long. And you're going to inhale here. And exhale. And inhale, just a little lift up. And exhale, lower down. Just small movements here. Inhale, lift up. And 
And exhale it right down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. And look over one shoulder, breathe in. Exhale, lower. Inhale, look over the other shoulder. Exhale, lower. And then lower down. And push yourself up onto all fours. Draw your knees up underneath you. And bring your hands back by your feet into child's pose. If this bothers your knees, you can lie on your back and hug your knees into your chest instead. So when you move your head around like that, it's really good for your vestibular system. That's your inner ear, which helps with your balance. And here in this position, you can make space for your body, whether you're lying on your back with your knees to your chest or here by um, opening your knees as well. Breathe into your belly. Okay, and then you can roll back up to seated. I'm going to come to a seated cross-legged position for this one. And for this one, we're going to come into easy twist, part of Ritsukhasan. And you're going to take your inhale. Exhale, rotate to your left. Take your right hand to the outside of your left knee. And then turn your head to the left and then rotate it back to the right and turn it to the left again. And do that with breath. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale back to the center. And exhale. So again, for um, a lot of people who find balance a challenge, this I get asked about balance a lot. Um, when you move your head around, we tend to live in a culture where everything, you know, our screens are fixed, our rear view mirrors are fixed. We even have um, monitors in our cars now so we don't have to look around behind us we don't have to check our blind spots because everything shows up in our cars we don't have to move our heads at all this actually does a great deal of detriment to our vestibular systems so that our balance atrophies because when you don't move your head around you um, don't your vestibular system isn't being engaged, so it atrophies, and then you lose your balance as well. So moving your head is very important to actually engaging your vestibular system so that you can actually balance. So um, although there wasn't a balance pose in this class per se, all this movement of your head in this class today will help you with your balance. So we could even add balance in as one of our tags for our class today. Okay, so inhale here. Exhale, rotate to your right. Take your left hand to the outside of your right knee 
And then turn your head all the way to your right. And then rotate your head to your left. And then back to your right. Inhale left. Exhale right. So we are doing it to connect with our energy. But I wanted you to know that it also serves another purpose. And then come back to the center. And notice how you're connected with your energy now. Okay, one more posture. You're going to cross your left leg over your right leg. So you come into Gomukhasan, cow's face pose. And it may be that um, you need to fill the space underneath your buttocks and so you can sit on a block or a folded blanket or place a cushion underneath if your hips are tight here and then what we're going to do is um, side bend to one side so let's side bend away from the tight side which is your left side so we'll side bend to, to the left and what I think we'll actually do is um, I'm just going to do that, actually, because that's a really nice uh, stretch all the way along the side and all the way through your neck. You could actually, um, you guys can take your right hand up and over and use your hand to lift your skull up and over a little bit more too. I can show you a little bit more on the other side. And then come back to the center and we'll switch legs so that you have your right leg on top now and your left leg on the bottom. Fill the space underneath with a block or a folded blanket. And this time we're going to side bend away from the tight side. So up and over to the left. And then, so this is what I was talking about. You can add, you've got your ear to your shoulder, your left ear to your left shoulder. You can add a little bit more of a stretch here by taking your left arm up and over and lifting your, uh, from the um, occipital ridge here, the base of your skull, lifting up and over here, reach your right hand out so you get even a little bit more through your neck here. And then lift back up and come back to center. And you can rest back on your back for Shavasana. I would recommend taking a bolster and placing it under your knees here for, um, so for nice smooth energy flow through your body. So that would look like this.
And this is another great opportunity to connect with your energy here, to slow down. And I will sit up and redo a poem. This poem is called Connections by Nancy Wood, and if you connect with it, great. You can allow yourself to receive it fully, and if not, you can just let it go. Every time we take a breath, we become the universe. The very moment of creation is contained in us and passes on to rocks and trees, animals, and fish. The old ones say the essence of life is in water, in wind, earth, and breath, fire, and bone, but most of all in breath. Our first connection to the elk, the hawk, the bear, and the buffalo. Without breath, no connection. Without connection, no creation. Without creation, no breath. This is the sacred circle of life, unbroken. So reflect back on your experience of today's class and connecting to your energy. What stands out to you what does it reveal to you about your life and the way you live your life? What's one small thing that you're going to carry with you off your mat and into your life this week? And then gradually allow your breath to deepen. Begin to wiggle and stretch out. Bend your knees, roll to your right side. Pause there for a moment and connect with your breath again. And then slowly start to make your way up to seated. And we'll finish with the mantra Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. May all beings be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. And it's a way that we gather in all the benefits of our practice and then offer them out into the world for the benefit of all living beings. So turn your left palm up and your right palm down. Make space with breath and a sigh. Loka samastha sukhino bhavantu Loka samastha sukhino bhavantu Loka samastha sukhino bhavantu Thank you for watching episode number 266 of Namaste Yoga. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like today's episode, please like our show and subscribe to our channel. If you know somebody else who you think would benefit from this show, then please share it with them, whether it be a friend or a family member or a coworker. We appreciate that very much. 
Today's question to answer in the comments is, how do you connect with the subtle and gentle nature of your energy and how do you build a relationship with your energy? Leave it in the comments below. I love hearing from you. And um, if you'd like more um, classes like this and more support in connecting with your energy, then we have a membership site that you can subscribe to here below where we have lots of value added content um, and lots of other classes to um, connect with your energy and build a relationship with your energy. We have a class on the intelligent core, which our members just love. Um, and also Wave of the Breath is another beautiful class that we filmed a number of years ago now in, in Cancun, Mexico. And then also the Wake Up Your Energy series from the Morning Sequences is an, an one that another member favorite. So we'd love for you to join our membership site where we have value added content, a community of like minded people from around the world where we support you in deepening your yoga practice. So, thank you so much for joining us today. I am sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our ocean. May you be as strong as our mountains. And may you be as rooted as the trees in our forest. Om Shanti Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com, and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.